Dear children, before we begin this class, let us start with a small prayer. Let us stand up and recite the prayer shown on the screen. We thank you, Lord Almighty, for having brought us together in this Carison class to study and pray and also to know and understand the divine revelations that God has prepared for us. We submit ourselves before the fellowship of the Most Holy Trinity. We pray along with the psalmist, It is you who light my lamp, the Lord my God, light up my darkness. O Jesus, who shines as the everlasting light in our lives, we pray to you to preserve us under your mighty protection in all our deeds of this year. Mother Mary, who strengthened your son during his times of suffering, intercede for us. Hi everyone, I am Grishma Tom and I am here to take your catechism class today. In the previous class, we have learned chapter number 8, Church, the Prophetic People. Today, we are going to learn about a new aspect about the church, the missionary church. So let us learn chapter number 9, the missionary church. Today we are going to learn chapter number 9, The Missionary Church. First of all, let us understand the meaning of the word missionary. Missionary means when you are sent on a mission. Here, the church's mission is to proclaim Christ and make him known as the only savior of the world and lead all peoples to this path of salvation. Jesus came on a mission from the Father. He was the first missionary. He fulfilled his Father's will by his life, death and resurrection. He gave them the Holy Spirit and laid the foundation of the church. God sent his Son to the world, our Savior Jesus Christ, so that the world might be saved through him. The mission of the church for evangelization. First of all, let us understand what is evangelization. Evangelization means to proclaim your belief or your faith. So as Christians, our duty is to proclaim our faith. Pope Francis said evangelization is the mission of the church, not just of a few, but my, your and our mission. So we need to proclaim Jesus through our own example. It can be on the playground or in the school, among your friends, at home, so that through our actions, people will find us different and they'll know that we are Christians. The church performs this God-given mission in three ways. The church proclaims Christ to those people who have not heard of him. The church instructs those who are already in the church through faith and baptism so that they may deepen their knowledge in the mystery of faith. The church re-evangelizes those Christians who have become weak in their practice of faith. The missionary work of the apostles 
Jesus chose, trained and commissioned the apostles for the mission of proclaiming the word of God. After receiving the Holy Spirit, on the day of Pentecost, the apostles became bold proclaimers of Jesus' death and resurrection. They were no more afraid of the Jews. Sufferings, persecutions and imprisonment could not stop them from proclaiming Christ and bearing witness to him. Through the preachings of the apostles, the church grew and became strong and spread to the other parts of the world. Being a Syro Malabar Christian, it is a matter of pride to talk about St. Thomas, a father of faith. When we reflect upon St. Thomas in the Bible, we come to know that he was a very courageous apostle. There are two instances which prove that he was very brave. One, when he says that let us go and die with him. He was brave enough to die with our Lord Jesus. The second instance, after the death of Jesus, when all the apostles were scared and were sitting inside the house, it was only St. Thomas who was not present there. It means he was brave enough to go out because St. Thomas said that he would not believe unless he put his hands into the wounds of Jesus. Jesus appeared to him and asked him to touch his wounds and believe. That is when St. Thomas gave the greatest proclamation of faith, my Lord and my God. For us Syro Malabar Christians, we are fortunate that we got our faith directly from an apostle. St. Thomas came to India and gave us our faith 2000 years ago. That is why we proudly call ourselves Martoma Nasranis. Martoma Nasranis can be found in every nook and corner of the world. We pray that we Martoma Nasranis may be bold like St. Thomas and be missionaries promoting the teachings of Jesus and bearing witness to him through our life. Now let us watch a video to know more about St. Thomas. St. Thomas, also called the Didymus, was one of the twelve apostles from Jesus Christ. He was privileged to have a rich faith experience and a personal encounter at the feet of the risen Lord when he exclaimed the immortal profession of faith, My Lord and My God. There is a very strong tradition that soon after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he came from Jerusalem to South India. He set foot on the shores of Kerala at Kodungallur in 52 AD. He baptized several people and found seven churches in the following places. Kodungallur Malayur, Parur, Kokkamangalam, Niranam, Nilakkal, and Koilan. preached, wrought miracles and labored for more than 10 years in these seven places. He made people embrace Christianity. After his labors in Malabar region, he went to Mailapur in Tamil Nadu along the Coromandel coast. Even here, he was doing the same, teaching, preaching and drawing a large number of the oppressed and suppressed into his fold. His conversion activities incensed the orthodox and enemies from their rank vowed to finish him.
he had therefore hidden himself at a cave in little mound the enemies did not leave him they followed him for a period of time with vengeance at last one day in 72 AD he was chased and was martyred at a place now known as St Thomas Mount Later he was buried at Santhom Church The National Shrine of St Thomas Basilica situated near Marina Beach is of historical importance This comes under the Archdiocese Madras Mylapore The National Shrine of St Thomas Basilica is one of the three in the world built over the tomb of an apostle of Christ. The others are St Peter's Basilica Room and Tomb of St James Spain. It is constructed using Gothic style. The Gothic churches are known for their tall spires. This style is very much adhered to in the architecture of the Santhom Church. topic is evangelization by the western missionaries after vasco da gama landed at calicut many christian missionaries came along with them they started their missionary work here in india among them saint francis xavier was filled with zeal for christ he was a jesuit priest who came as the papal nuncio for india and eastern countries on 6th may 1542 he proclaimed the gospel in the western coasts of india he died on the coast of china on the 8th of december in 1552 his mortal remains are at bom jesus basilica in goa the next sub topic is the missionary spirit of the siro malabar church and its growth We Martoma Nasranis imbibe the missionary zeal and faith of St Thomas. Many missionaries, both men and women, from the Siro Malabar Church are engaged in octane missionary work in different parts of the world. To this day, a considerable member of Indian missionaries belong to the Siro Malabar Church. In recognition of the missionary spirit and the zeal of the Siro Malabar Church and its members, A number of dioceses were entrusted to the Siro Malabar Church by the Holy See. The Eparchy of Shamshabad was established on 10th October 2017 by Pope Francis. Our bishop, Mar Rafael Tattil, has been a loving shepherd looking after all our needs. The next subtopic is every Christian is a missionary. One is called to participate in the mission of proclaiming Christ by virtue of his baptism to bear witness to Christ by leading a life in accordance with the gospel values is the fundamental mission of every Christian as we discussed earlier the mission of each Christian is to bear witness to Jesus by their words and actions especially when we are in the midst of people who do not know Jesus Christ 
you as students can radiate the love of Jesus through your behavior, character, values, etc. The word of God to remember is Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Mark 16, 15 Let us pray. Jesus, who came on a mission from the Father, we pray to you to give the gifts of the Holy Spirit to all those who follow you so that they become the missionaries of love and service in the church. The task for you is to write an article on the topic In the modern world, how can we be a missionary and be involved in mission activities? Kindly submit your task to your respective catechism teachers. Kindly also go through the video of Santom to Shamshabad released by the Eparchy of Shamshabad for its third anniversary celebrations. Thank you and God bless you all. Let us end the class by thanking God for giving us this wonderful opportunity. Let us stand and recite the prayer shown on the screen. O oh, merciful Lord, we thank you for having sent forth upon us your wisdom from the holy heavens, from the throne of your glory. Thank you for having chosen us to be the shining lamps of the world by eliminating darkness and spreading light. O oh Jesus, you said, it is not the will of my heavenly Father that one of these little ones should be lost. We thankfully join our hands before you for holding all of us to your bosom. Following the example of Mother Mary, who readily accepted to be the handmaid of the Lord, we too pray that we may be strengthened to do God's will in every walk of our life. Amen.